Hi and welcome once again to my channel Camp Science. In this video, we will learn about reacting masses and moles from the equations of any given reaction. Let's see that to study about reacting masses and moles, what do we need to know? We need to know what is stoichiometry. We also will calculate the quantity of reactants and products in terms of their masses. We can also calculate the quantity of reactants and products in terms of their moles. So let's first see what stoichiometry. It is the ratio of various reactants and products in an equation and it's called stoichiometry of the equation. Now let's learn this with the help of an equation as an example here it shows that magnesium reacts with oxygen to make magnesium oxide whose formula is MgO. Now making this equation we need to balance it before we learn what stoichiometry. So we can see here that to balance oxygen O2 we have added 2 here in, the, in front of the product. And again, to balance magnesium, we have added 2 in front of magnesium in the reaction. Now, let's study that what do we mean by this. This means that 2 molecules or 2 moles of magnesium reacts with 1 molecule of oxygen or 1 mole of oxygen to form two molecules of the product or two moles of the product magnesium oxide. Now we need to learn about, we need to note down about this ratio. That is we can see here that the ratio of the reacting reactants magnesium and oxygen is 2 is to 1. That shows that we need twice the magnesium compared to oxygen to make twice the product. And we have already seen in the definition that the stoichiometry is the ratio of various reactants and product in the equation. So, this ratio of 2 is to 1 in the equation shows us the stoichiometry and the ratio of 2 is to 2 that is 1 is to 1 of one of the reactant and product is again included and here for the ratio of oxygen and product we can see that the ratio is 1 is to 2. So this ratio of 2 is to 1 is to 2 is called stoichiometry of the equation. Now let's see some calculations using masses in an equation. The first example is what masses of calcium oxide could be obtained by heating 25 gram of limestone. So the first thing which we need to know here is that what is limestone that is calcium carbonate and we also need to make an equation for this question. So what question says is that heating calcium La carbonate limestone gives calcium oxide. So we know the equation it is calcium oxide and it gives carbon dioxide also. Now the second thing which we need to do is balance this equation. But as we can see that this equation is already balanced the number of calcium carbon and oxygen atoms on both the sides is same. So this equation doesn't need the balancing. Now the question asked is about the masses. We need to calculate the mass and we are also given the mass in the question. So here the second thing which we need to know is the relative atomic mass of our compounds given in the question that is calcium carbonate and calcium oxide. We can ignore the relative atomic mass of carbon dioxide now because there is no question or no data given for the calcium carbonate in this question. So, we need to calculate the relative molecular mass of calcium carbonate and calcium oxide. And if you don't know how to calculate the relative molecular mass, then you need to see my first video of the mole concept how to calculate the molecular mass. Here, after calculating the molecular mass, we 
should know that the molecular mass of calcium carbonate is 100 grams and calcium oxide is 56. Now looking at the question again, 25 gram of limestone is used. So we can write 25 gram below calcium carbonate and we need to calculate the mass of calcium oxide. So that's what is the question. Now what we need to do here is cross multiply to find out the mass of calcium oxide. So here on cross multiplying the values, we have 25 multiplied by 56 divided by 100 and the answer is 14 gram of calcium oxide. So 14 gram of calcium oxide is produced when 25 gram of limestone is heated. So calculations related to masses from the equation means few things. First is we need to write the equation. Second thing we need to balance the equation and third thing we need to calculate the molecular masses of the required compounds. Now let's see another example of the similar type which says calculate the mass of water formed when 4 gram of methane is completely burned in oxygen. Now as I said once again that first we need to make an equation. So let's make an equation first. Here our reaction is between methane that is CH4 and oxygen which gives carbon dioxide and water. Now as I said the second thing we need to do is the balance the equation. So balance the, balancing the equation we can see that the carbon is one on both sides. So carbon doesn't mean balance. Now looking at hydrogen is hydrogen is 4 here but 2 here. So we can add 2 on the product side to make hydrogen 4. Now this makes oxygen 2 plus 2 4. So again we need to add 2 here to make oxygen 4. Now our reaction is balanced. The second thing which we need to do is that we need to know the relative molecular masses. Now here as we need to calculate the mass for water and we are given the mass for methane. So let's calculate the relative molecular mass only for methane and water. Now methane's relative molecular mass is 16 gram and water is 18 grams but as we can see that for balancing the water we have used 2 moles of water. Now here comes the importance of stoichiometry. So here the 18 should be multiplied by 2 because it shows that 1 mole of methane burns to give 2 moles of water. So if 16 gram of methane is burning, it's going to give 2 moles of water that is 36 grams of water. So we can write that 16 gram of methane gives 36 grams of water then 4 gram of methane should give how much? Again cross multiplying we get 4 into 36 divided by 16 which gives us the answer of 9 grams. So 4 gram of methane gives 9 gram of water on complete burning. Now this is the method where we are using directly masses to masses ratio and calculating. But in many of the cases we have seen that people first convert the mass to moles and then using the mole ratio the calculation is done. Again after calculating the moles then it is converted back to mass. Now that's an indirect method and find it a very long method so we can use such mass method directly also but if some question ask you about the moles then we can calculate through the moles also. So let's see our next example using moles. So here is our next example. Actually the question is same but we have reformed it where it's asked 
Calculate the moles of water formed when 4 gram of methane is completely burned in the oxygen. Now you can see that it's the same question but in place of mass we have replaced it by moles. So as we had calculated earlier that 9 gram of water was produced through our calculation when we had done it through masses. So either we can calculate it through masses as we have already done and then change this 9 gram into moles by as we know the formula of moles is mass divided by MR that is relative molecular mass. So 9 divided by 18 which is the MR of water is going to give us 0.5 moles of water. But we can calculate it by another method also. So let's see that method. So for that, again, we need to know the equation. So I'm rewriting the equation where CH4 burns completely in oxygen to give carbon dioxide and water. And we need to balance it. So let's balance the oxygen and hydrogen as we had seen earlier. Looking at the question says 4 gram of methane is burned. So let's first convert this 4 gram into moles. So 4 divided by its relative molecular mass of methane that is 16 gram. So it is 0 0.25 moles of methane. Now if you look at the mole ratio of methane and water it is 1 is to 2 so that clearly shows that if one mole of methane is burned we get double the moles of water that is two moles so here if our moles for methane is 0 0.25 then the moles of water produced should be 0 0.25 multiplied by 2 that is 0 0.5 moles and so here we have got the moles of water produced. So 0 0.5 moles of water is produced when 4 gram of methane is completely burnt. So this is how we can calculate the moles also from the equation if we know the data properly whether in mass or moles. The next example is again related to the moles. Says calculate the moles of oxygen required when 4 gram of methane is completely burnt in the oxygen. Now here we are calculating the amount of reactant. Another reactant required when one of the reactant mass is known. And that also we have to calculate in the moles. So again first we need to write the equation. So let's rewrite the equation which we have already written earlier twice. So here is the equation and let's balance it which adds 2 with oxygen and 2 with water. Now as we need to calculate the moles, so let's first convert the methane into moles. So moles of methane is equal to 4 gram that is mass of methane used here divided by its molecular mass which is 16 which gives us the answer 0 0.25 moles. Now if you look at the ratio here it's 1 is to 2 moles that shows that for each mole of methane we require double the moles of oxygen. So moles of oxygen required here is 0 0.25 multiplied by 2. Why? Because the moles of methane used here is 0 0.25 and we require double the moles of oxygen. So we are multiplying it by 2 which gives us the answer of 0 0.5 moles of oxygen gas. So this is our answer and it shows us that 0 0.5 moles of oxygen is required minimum to react with 4 gram of methane. So we here we have seen two methods react uh, using calculations of equations that is we can calculate any given mass of a reactant required or product form 
or we can calculate the moles also of any reactant or product if some equation data is given and one of the reactant how much of the reactant is used is given so this is what we can do calculations using moles and masses and here is what is involved stoichiometry and in our next videos we will also see more calculations related to this because here i have just given one or two examples but if you have understood this and you have liked my video don't forget to subscribe it and don't forget to see my earlier videos also if you haven't seen